Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today our project is to put our tunnels over our scabosia. We're going to do a two tunnel system with this. We're going to have an inside tunnel which is basic black poly pipe. It's a uh, three-quarter inch utility grade. You can get it at Home Depot for about 20 bucks for a hundred foot roll. These are old scrap pieces that we had on the farm that were used on old previous low tunnels. And what we're going to do is just simply stick these in the ground inside of our more permanent EMT hoops, uh, which we built last spring. You can check out the video on that. We did that, I think it was back like in March or so. One of the things that people might wonder about is, well, why are we putting frost blanket over these guys? And what it really does is it depends on the plant. In this particular case, this is a perennial scoop scabosia, and we're not really sure exactly how frost tender it is or isn't. We've already lost a couple uh, since this last fall, starting, um, it seems like a, more like the Tutti Frutti had the worst of it, and uh, we're not sure exactly why. We've had a couple of frosty nights. Uh, when it got really down into the 20s, we put a frost blanket over it and they seem to be okay. So we're going to do that with any of these types of overwintering things to kind of protect them a little bit from getting knocked back. And hopefully then uh, next spring, uh, with the plants, the majority of the plants that left, they should produce a real good crop of scabosia. We're going to use the same technique on some of our more overwintered things just to kind of give them a head start. Um, they can normally things like foxglove and, and columbines and overwintering dianthus can take uh, the wet and the cold, but it does take a toll on them. And if it gets too wet or too cold for too long extended period of time, what we found out here with our heavy clay soils is we end up with other problems. So we will be putting plastic tunnels over the top of the majority of our other overwintered things. And if it looks like we're going to get to an extreme Arctic event, we'll probably also put uh, fabric cloth over the plants inside the tunnel. But um, that kind of tend, tends to us to be kind of a rare thing. Happens maybe once every five years where we really get nailed hard. Um, so we're going to finish this guys up and we put the... So Farmer Tony, do you put the fat, uh, frost blankets on and when it's just, uh, you know, 35 to 40 degrees and you just leave them? Or do you remove them on a daily basis? You know, that really depends on the plant because one of the things a frost blanket's going to do is it's going to cut down light transmission. So the longer you leave it on, as an example, Agrabond 50 cuts light transmission by almost 50%. And um, so on a low light winter days, that could actually slow things down a little further. But most plants kind of really stop their vegetative growth once you get below nine and a half hours of day length, which is, by the way, probably going to be sometime this next week, which would be around November 15th. And we typically come out of that sometime in the early part of February or la last week of January. I can't remember exact, but that's usually when you'll notice that things are going to start growing again. So during this really down period, if a plant needs the protection, we're going to err on the side of protection. If it's something that can really take uh, frost down into the low 20s without really showing any you know, significant damage, something like a foxglove or a dianthus, we're probably not going to bother. But if it's something like we have an arctic blast event come through, and we've had these from time to time, where you'll get down to 10 degrees at night, or maybe even we've had some uh, a couple years ago where we got down to zero. Uh, it doesn't tend to last long, but those kind of days also tend to never really get above freezing during the daytime. So in that instance, we will probably put fabric, uh, the fabric cloth on just about everything that we're trying to save through the winter. Frost blanket. Yeah, the frost blankets. Um, we want to be, we want to have the protection in those cases, but the vast majority of the rest of our winter here in the Pacific Northwest, the west side, um, we tend to be in the 40s, 30s at night, 40s in the day. Um, the only thing we'd really protect are things that are really, really tender. Uh, and then when we get a warm day, we'd want to move the fabric cloth off. So there's a bit of a dance that goes on. Um, you got it. The other thing we have to remember too is that if we're putting plastic over the top, uh, we're going to make sure that we're going to vent those on sunny days because it can get uh, 75, 80 plus degrees under that plastic real fast. And that's another case of if you have plastic over the top with the fabric cloth, you're probably going to want to pull the fabric cloth back too. In this design, we'll show you uh, once we get it set up, we'll show you how easy it's going to be to move the fabric cloth on and off the plants.
we have a trick. So the easiest way to get this fabric cloth in is uh, to grab the side of the metal hoop, lift it up, and push the fiberglass rod in, and that way you can remove one end of the, the uh, hoop and then simply put it back on. And we did that all the way down, and so now we've got it attached at the far end and we've got it uh, looped through each one of these hoops. We have our, our hoops that are gonna hold things up in place. So the last step is we're gonna cut off the excess off of this and uh, create kind of a little pigtail and tie it off to the end stake uh, for the tunnel itself. And we're gonna wanna get a bit of tension on this when we do this. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna wanna do before we tie off the pigtail is we wanna get it draped over the actual hoops itself so we get a good idea of, of where we got some slack and where um, we need to tension things up. So first thing we're going to do is pull this guy over to the side. Assuming I can reach it here. So, we've got it draped over, now we're just going to kind of equally try to keep pulling tension on it until you feel the resistance and then stop. But uh, we're looking for kind of try, trying to start from the center uh, where we're going to bunch this up. And what we want to be is relatively, the stake is right here where my right hand is, and we want to be ahead of the stake where our, where our bunching for our pigtail is going to be probably about a foot. So we're going to then take our material and kind of begin to bunch it up as best we can. Now this doesn't have to be as tight as it would be, say, plastic, because it's not going to have any real weather on it. Because in any inclement weather situation, what we're going to be doing is uh, pulling the plastic all the way down so the wind won't be getting into it. And that's about where we want it. First thing we're going to do is put a zip tie here. We're using about 8 inch zip ties. And then the other thing we're going to do on our second zip tie is we're going to want to put our tie down string on it. And I'm using the wrong tool for the for the job here, but just bailing fine so it's not that big of a deal. You want to zip tie over the string so the string is going to be pulling on the zip tie itself. There we go. Now before we do any kind of connecting we're going to cut this excess off. And what we do is leave again probably about 10 inches or so and we just cut the uh, fabric cloth. This is gonna this was from an old piece that was about a hundred foot long and what we're gonna have left here is probably about uh, say this bed here is about 70 feet so we're gonna have about 30 foot left. But this is gonna be good enough probably for a couple of years so we'll make certain that we label this one when we get finished with it in the spring and set it aside so that next fall we can use it again for this same bed. Okay, one of the last steps we do, this is a little bit thicker than one zip tile will uh, take, so we kind of gang them together. That's just basically you're zip tying one into the other. It gives us a little extra room to tie things down. 
This foldover just kind of prevents things from pulling through or fraying or getting in the way. So it's just a way of kind of tidying things up a bit. Okay, so now we've attached the, the string. So then the last step is we want to attach it to our actual hold down post. And what we're gonna do is just like we did on the other end, is we're gonna tie it just a bit below where we would be tying the uh, cable hold down for the uh, hoops, hoop plastic on the hoops. Just gotta open this guy up a little bit. And then we pull it tight as we can get it. And we'll just do a double half hitch. And there, she's tightened down. We'll put the winch for the plastic back on and uh, that's basically it. So now what you can see is the entire row has a fabric cloth over the hoops. Well we got the plastic out of storage it's a little dirty but uh, the, the first thing we're gonna do is drape it over these uh, hoops and try to get it kind of straightened out a little bit and then then we'll go with trying to tension down the ends. So putting the plastic back on is uh, kind of a two-step process. It's first getting any twists or turns out of it, um, any refuse and look for any bad spots in it. And then well, what we'll do is, is, like I said, the last step will be then once we got it lined up and it's equal on both sides, then we'll attach it to the ratchets and kind of tighten it up. So let's get that step done. It's a little noisy, so I won't be talking through this. I usually stand though, I usually do stand on the opposite side and pull the plastic over and it's always beneficial to do this on a day when there's no wind, which is really great today. Got a little rain, but no wind. Okay, we've attached the uh, cables uh, to the plastic to the ratchets on the back end just loosely enough just to kind of have something to pull against. And now what we're going to be doing is attaching the cable um, to the uh, tied up end here that has a U-bolt and the steel cable goes into the ratchet. And what we'll do, since Got it all tied up nice and neat. Oops. So even mistakes happen here. There we go. Got to get things in the right spot. Now I just use my fence pliers and tighten it up. And we'll go to the back end and do the exact same thing. And as you can see already, the plastic is actually getting fairly tight against the ribs. So we'll tighten up as much as we can on both ends, try to, try to do it on an equal basis. And um, then the last step will be putting the actual tie downs around each individual rib. Okay, we're putting the last bit of tension on it. Now we should be in good shape. Now you can see right now the plastic's already pretty tight. She's got a lot of uh, a lot of stretch to it. Um, this thing has been off the hoops for a while so 
what we'll have to do is come back in a day or so and give it another couple of tightens on the end because things will stretch as it warms and cools down. The next step is uh, just make sure, kind of do a final check to make sure that we're equal on both sides. This plastic is 10 foot wide and the hoops are 10 feet so there shouldn't be much laying on the ground on either side. It should be pretty close. And we'll tie down each individual hoop and um, that'll be the final step and then after that um, this thing is good to go and what we'll need to do though is vent it up and we'll show you how to do that and we'll also show you how to pull the fabric cloth up and make certain that uh, the plants stay vented. But the whole purpose of this is to do this now instead of trying to get it done when you get two days or one day notice that you got some arctic event coming your way. This is already done and it's good to go and, and by doing that you're Miles ahead. Okay, we've got the tie down uh, strings draped over now on each rib. This tunnel has 12 ribs and what we try to do when we start tightening up, tensioning up on the individual ribs is we start in the center and work our way out. That way what we're doing is, is we're kind of pushing any slack out to the ends. So if we, need, if, if we need to, which I doubt we will, but if we need to, we can then use the wench to tighten up the remaining slack. So um, you'll notice the tie down string has a loop on one end and it's a regular string on the other. The objective is we, we go through the anchor loops with the non-looped end, come up and come through and tie this off with a half hitch. Then went through the anchor string and we're going to go through the loop itself. Now we can start equalizing things up. And typically what I try to do is try to have the loop somewhere once we finish tightening up somewhere right around in the middle. And the other thing you may notice I'm doing is I'm holding down the plastic as close as I can to the rib with my foot just so it doesn't inch its way up before I tighten it down. Um, tends to be fairly important on your first few hoops, but after you get it kind of straightened out, it doesn't really matter too much. So we just pull down tight, equalize the tension until you've got enough deflection over the rib itself. You may notice the rib is up and the tie down side is down try to equalize out the deflection on both sides so you're not doing too much on either one. The whole objective isn't to go so tight on these first few ones because you're going to have the most slack on the first ones and hardly any on the last. So you're going to kind of, you kind of want maybe about an inch or two of deflection and that's about it. Then we come through and just do a half hitch, tie it up. As you can see what you got is a loop here. To undo this at any time all you need to do is pull this string and it's done. So you can see by doing this, you can take these down really pretty fast, if you needed to. And then we just move on to the next one. And what we'll do is do the same thing. These two are in the middle, and then we'll alternate going back and forth on each side. Okay, we're tying on the last pull down string for the uh, entire hoop the last slip knot in there and she's all tight. Actually I think we got it tightened down pretty good from the beginning so I'm not sure that we need to do any extra ratchet work on this guy. This is the completed tunnel. Now the vast majority of the infrastructure of this tunnel was put in place last March. All the hoops were bent. Be sure to check out the video on bending the hoops and the installation of the original parts of this tunnel and how to do it. Again, we'll have references to it in uh, the show notes, as well as you can just check out the playlist for Season Extension. It's got all the videos of that on there. So, we have an inside fabric cloth suspended over the plants. We have the plastic over the top of the tunnel. This guy, and the way this is set up, should be able to give frost protection down into the low 20s really easy. You get a couple degrees from the actual plastic itself, and you get eight degrees from the Agrabon. If we needed to go lower in protection, say we were getting a, a zero event or something like that, we would simply put another blanket on the inside 
and that would give us probably adequate protection. Or in worst case, you know, if you really felt that something is super tender, you could even put a third blanket on. But that'd only be for a very short period of time because it'd be almost like no light at all getting into these plants. So with this type of setup, your light transmission is reduced to probably about 40%. 35 to 40 percent to the plants right now when it's completely shut down. So we don't want to keep it that low uh, during a, a long period of time, meaning you can't like, you know, put this down and go on vacation for two weeks and go, ha, you know, it's good. Um, the chances are that you, uh, you would have either get too hot in there because any day, like today is a cloudy day, but even so when you go inside one of these tunnels, it's very warm on the inside. So we have to make sure that we vent it. Since our nighttime temps right now, we're kind of in this period where we're getting a little warm weather, we're gonna vent it and leave it vented up overnight. We're also gonna take the fabric cloth and show you how to move it to the center. And, and uh, we can, you can either use clamp clips to keep it in place or a piece of string or something of that nature just around the ribs itself. And that keeps it to the center, give maximum airflow and the best light that you can get um, relative to you know, having plastic over it. So let's do the venting up and then uh, we'll talk about how to pull up the fabric cloth itself. Okay, now we're gonna vent this thing up. When venting, one of the things that we do is we make certain that we roll the plastic back into the inside. And the idea behind that is, although it will capture some moisture inside of that fold from condensation, uh, rain moisture on the, on the outside will keep it uh, from you know being pulled down by the rain itself because if you roll it up or push it up to too much on the outside rain will actually pool in it and actually push it down so you may think you're vented and come back in a couple hours and find that uh, the rain is pushed down your uh, your sides of your hoop house so it's just a matter of lifting it up and just kind of gently folding it under and we do that down the whole the whole length on both sides Okay, we've got it vented up, uh, mostly all the way down. It's about two foot from the ground up, so you got good airflow. So the next thing that we're gonna do is pull the agrabon up and tie it off to the center. Now, if you're in a drier climate, you don't necessarily need to tie it off to the center. You can just pull it off to one side and that'd be actually pretty fast. But we wanna keep it suspended off the ground because uh, that's how you pick up lots of critters that you may not want, ants and slugs and you know, other things that, that you don't want in the actual fabric cloth itself. So we start it on the end and we bunch it up and what we do is, now you can use various different ways of doing it. If you got spring clamps or something like that and you got enough of those, you know, those will work too. It's just basically something to move it to the center and hold it to the center. So we're going to bunch it up and then we're going to use this uh, about a foot and a half piece of uh, baling twine with a loop on the end and by pulling it up, what we do is we bunch it and we kind of wrap around once, twice, and then we'll pull it through and just uh, do a half hitch or something of that nature. Now let's see, maybe we won't use a half hitch. I'm not very good at what my knots are supposed to be, but. The idea is what I want is a quick release when I want to move it down. So then I move it back to the center. As you can see now, it's, it's uh, suspended over the center. I don't necessarily tie down every single rib. I mean, you could if you want to. Uh, I typically like skip a rib and, and move on. It does tend to pooch a little bit over these guys, but um, it, it um, is good enough to get enough light because where we're angled here today is this, this tunnel is angled... Um, north-south and so as the day length in the morning comes in it gets light in from the side and in the afternoon it gets light in from this side so actually uh, we're in pretty good shape and then the tunnel itself I push it up a little bit to get to it but when you put it back down you can see you get a good two foot so we'll tie off every single one of these guys and then we'll show you what it looks like and and that is um, shouldn't take too long especially when you want to pull it down. All you got to do is pull that slip knot and pull, pull the fabric cloth down over both sides. And, and then also too, if you need to, uh, you can pull down the sides of the plastic down even further. 
So let's get them tied up. Okay, we've got the fabric cloth now, which is Agrabon. Some people get confused. I call it fabric cloth. Other people call it fleece, frost protection blankets. It's all the same thing. Agrabon is what we use, and it's now, uh, we got it suspended above the ribs. And we've got the plastic vented on both sides, so we've got a lot of good cross breeze. And the sun is getting a little lower in the sky, and you can see that it's now shining inside of the tunnel itself. So we've kind of got the best of both worlds right here. Um, we, all we need to do is just kind of move the plastic down so it's kind of even. And uh, it should be, uh, this, should, this setup should last really well until we have a storm. Uh, so we're not going to do much more to it at this point. And the thing that we want to make certain that we, we get conveyed to folks is this is a system that works for us and works in our environment. This design has been pretty robust up to pretty high winds, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, and we've had no problems when they're all shut down. Um, and even when they're up vented like this, you know, a breezy day of 10, 20 miles, maybe even a gust of 25, 30 miles an hour, it doesn't even bother this thing at all. It's rock solid. And so I just wanted to kind of thank you guys for watching today and hope this answers a lot of the questions that we've been, ha been getting on uh, YouTube and seeing on the Facebook page and um, be sure to subscribe if you like what you see here we have other videos this is going to be posted in our playlist called season extension so we have a bunch of other uh, videos in there as I mentioned earlier and uh, you know if you feel like um, you want to check out our website be sure to check that out too it's BearMountainFarm.com we'll have a uh, it'll be in the final uh, end notes on the on the video here and we want to thank you for watching today.